In Mystery History's opinion, the ancient ruins found upon the plateau of Giza are some of, if not the most, heavily debated, heavily guarded, and most academically protected ancient site on Earth. Yet it remains one of the most talked about, mysterious, intriguing ancient stonework of them all. Many people are now aware of the anomalies, which were once tightly controlled secrets, surrounding the exterior features of the build, and, more importantly, the achievements that these feats once were. These inexplicable factors – the size of the megalithic exoskeleton, the vastly different ages of the casing stones – are now thought by many as the defining motive for a cover-up regarding the pyramid's true age and original purpose. Media blackouts, counterintelligence, and many other outlandish conspiracies now rife among the research of the site, from giants to UFOs, the ideas and theories people have put forward for their function, or indeed, what could be hidden in voids constantly discovered, yet to be penetrated, these hidden rooms, along with their ancient entrances, remain a complete enigma, even in recent years, as advances in penetrative radar become a reality and accessible to self-funded individuals and research teams, more and more voids, unexplained heat anomalies, and even air shafts not known of before, continue to be discovered within these enormous mystifying structures. Yet, as mentioned, the subculture, many genuine yet misguided in their investigative method, yet also many funded individuals, involved in many other hard-to-deny subjects, has successfully swamped the field with dis and or misinformation, creating opinionated followings with a successfully corrupted impartiality, deceptively manipulated into becoming said misinformation's advocates, rather than whence they came, an open mind, a skill for discussion, and an unbiased critical approach to subjects whose true nature are actively being protected. The predictably far fewer articles, books, and other logical, critical, impartial to all but fact, unwavering competent research done by many capable individuals, although adrift within an ocean of fallacy, shines much light upon some highly compelling yet albeit highly controversial features of the Plateau of Giza. Features which may one day lead us to ultimately unlocking the pyramid secrets and allowing us to finally understand what these structures past functions truly were, not only in detail, but perhaps in an attempt of replication. During our own research, we have found some interesting similarities between Giza and Bosnia, among other lesser-known pyramid structures. And this curious yet continually reoccurring feature is now being more frequently discovered all over the world. The Great Pyramid of Bosnia, for example, a site discovered by Samir Osmanagic, has an ingenious river which, after three years of research, was confirmed by him and his team to have had an artificial current. The reason for this is currently unknown, but it seems water was a significant factor in the past function of these ancient structures. Water is a curious thing, and in many situations, acts just like that of electricity. It runs in currents and travels through tubes like electric through cables. Yet no one seems to know what electricity is. We hypothesize that these water features are of tremendous significance when it comes to understanding the true function of these incredible structures. But I digress. The plateau has always intrigued me. Although buried by a desert sand, the solid sandstone below is of an unimaginable size and seemingly level, over 40 feet deep in some places, yet no one truly understands its origins. Indeed. Structures as large as the pyramids would need impressive foundations. But the plateau, it seems, is far too large and, if man-made, bafflingly sparse of any ruins, structures which one would have presumed would have been the reason for its enormous construction. There is, however, another hypothesis. A legend that told of a lost labyrinth, a secret underground lair as big as a town a secret underground structure so large and thus so easy to get lost within, it became known as the Labyrinth. 
long spoke of but always dismissed as mythological. This due to a lack of any substantial evidence for its existence. That is, until a few years ago, when a groundbreaking rediscovery was made, yet unfortunately it seems, this groundbreaking event was somehow masterfully stifled, not shared by mainstream media, funded institutions with their armory of literature and magazines alike. Thus, it merely becomes an observational exercise in yet another display of the influence our currently controlling institutions have over public opinion, preventing an underground city of gigantic proportions buried beneath Giza, never successfully achieving public notoriety. The sand of Harara was scanned by a Belgian-Egyptian expedition team in 2008 in an effort to research something known as the Quarry Theory suggested by Petri in 1889, following his finding of a great artificial stone surface measuring 304 meters by 244 meters. Petri interpreted the enormous artificial stone plateau as the foundation of the labyrinth, concluding that the building itself, although long believed to have been totally demolished in the Ptolemaic period, had in fact survived and lay hidden for millennia. The surveys proved its foundation remained unpenetrated and still laid undiscovered beneath the sandstone, never lost, the possibility of the results being that of the roof of the labyrinth, all but proven true. The following is an excerpt from the DIG's official report. Quote, Underneath this upper zone, below the artificial stone surface, appears, in spite of the turbid effect of the groundwater, at a depth of 8 to 12 meters, a grid structure of gigantic size, made of a very highly resistant material like granite stone. This proves the presence of a colossal archaeological feature, which has to be reconsidered as the roof of the still existing labyrinth." End quote. Are the legends true? Does the labyrinth of Giza still lay hidden, unexplored beneath the sands of Egypt? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. The underground cities of Cappadocia, Turkey, number more than 200 and are spread across the entire region. It is highly possible that there is many more lying below the surface, just waiting to be found. Of all the underground cities discovered so far, the most awe-inspiring is perhaps the Derinkuyu city. It was discovered by accident in 1963. When a local family was renovating a house, a wall gave way to reveal a passage that led to this underground network. According to National Geographic, it is 11 levels deep, descending more than 280 feet to the bedrock, covering an area of over 4 miles squared. It includes temples, tombs, shops, living quarters, and even livestock pens. Over 15,000 air shafts were built into its design and would have been enough room to comfortably house approximately 20,000 people. The underground city has extending passages that connected to other neighboring and underground water well systems, providing fresh water. What is especially interesting regarding this underground world is the evidence to suggest that they were hiding from something terrifying. A sophisticated security system consisting of a particular build design accompanied by numerous gigantic rolling stone blocking doors that would seal the city from the inside. Moreover, its multi-layered design meant that each level could be sealed off from the next level using this same system. Just what were these people hiding from? Whatever it was, they obviously preferred to run rather than confront it. The structure was excruciatingly carved into the underground rock and is as strong today as the day it was built, safely accommodating guests such as archaeologists and tourists. Whoever built the network obviously had an advanced knowledge of stoneworking, architecture, engineering, and the local geography. Aging the structure has proven very difficult. There are no existing quarries, waste piles, or tools to examine. Furthermore, there are no records documenting its construction, or people who may have lived there. Also, unfortunately, many cultures have used the underground towns over the centuries. According to UNESCO, it is believed that the first signs of monastic activity in Cappadocia date back to the 4th century, 
at which time acting on the instructions of Basil the Great, in order to resist attacks from the Arabs, the people should band together into small, local communities and begin inhabiting cells dug into the rock. Therefore, modern academia tends to conclude that they were likely built by the Phrygian people around 800 BC. Yet it is also a strong possibility that they are far older than this. By the bishop's instruction, they are to inhabit, not build. Therefore, it's safe to assume he was aware of their existence, rather than the person who thought them up. Some believe the underground caves were constructed by the very ancient Persian king Yima. Yima, attributed as mythological by many, is said to have had a lifespan of more than 900 years, a common feature of biblical figures as well. The Zoroastrian text Vendidad states that Yima built an underground city on the orders of the god Ahura Mazda to protect his people from a catastrophic winter. Much like the account of Noah in the Bible, Yima was instructed to collect pairs of the best animals and people as well as the best seeds in order to reseed the earth after the winter cataclysm. This was before the last ice age, 110,000 years ago. Hey guys, so a few months back I shared with you the story of adventurous geologists who had trekked far into the cold wilderness of Russia in an effort to catalog the largest megalithic site on earth. So remote, they are steeped in legends of snow yetis and mysterious monsters devouring all who dare to venture into these remote areas. When I shared the amazing images of these stone structures, many argued that they were natural formations. Maybe because they struggled to conceive such enormous ancient ruins in such remote places. Discoveries that seem to be many hundreds of thousands of years old. Maybe even as old as the giant sphinx. More and more is being learnt about them. With ever more daring explorations of the ruins being undertaken, a team discovered a vault in one of the stone megaliths an access vault that led them into an artificially made stone cavern system. These underground structures are truly massive and are undoubtedly constructed by an intelligent builder. Hidden for many millennia, these caverns are not only massive but constructed using blocks placed upon one another that are over 50 feet in length in some instances, making these stones many thousands of tons in weight, seemingly placed effortlessly into the shape of underground walls. This discovery has not really shed light upon how the ancients built such structures, but rather pushed their apparent capabilities farther from our understanding. Not only are these structures purpose of vast mystery, but they also contain place stones bigger than any we've ever discovered, even eclipsing the unfinished stone found at the ancient Chinese quarry known as Yangshan. A stone can be found here half cut away from the bedrock, in excess of 16,000 tons thought by scholars throughout time to have been left at the quarry due to them not being able to move it. Yet here we have stones placed into a cave system designed which even outweigh Yangshan. This not only proves they could move them, but lift them and work them. Just how many quote natural formations are really just extremely weathered once extremely large stone built structures? Maybe there are many stone granite hills and even maybe mountains that dot our earth which were, before millennia of rain, grand structures of a forgotten people. The awe-inspiring ancient city of Hegra, also known as Madain Saleh, close sister of the equally astonishing and cinematically famous ancient site of Petra, is now finally open to the public, able to go and investigate for themselves. We have covered this site and indeed the gigantic scale of the rock-cut temples, the claimed tombs, and tall doorways to enter these sites. Furthermore, we have covered uncanny similarities found upon rare, unfinished areas of these once astonishingly precisely cut solid rock ruins. In addition to the enormous scale of the stone-cut buildings and the absence of doorsteps, which would have enabled the now average-sized human claimed as having created them, no chance of entering them with ease. This giving credence to the many theories pertaining to these gigantic structures, along with their gigantic scales and their enormous megalithic counterparts found at other sites, linked to by cutting marks previously mentioned, were instead constructed by an ancient, now lost race, far larger than any of today, one capable of these incredible ancient feats. Could these structures have instead of, as so many, as indeed we have postulated, 
not actually built by ancient man, but were actually made by ancient giants. Not only with the muscular ability to have once lifted such enormous stones into position, such as that of the enormous megalithic stones incorporated into the Great Pyramids of Giza, found within the temples of Baalbek, Gornyashoria, but also almost globally? Could this explain how they were once able to liberate these giant stones from the quarries and bedrocks selected almost many miles from where they were eventually placed with seeming ease? How they were somehow transported, enormous stones high atop mountains, assembling them into the remarkably precise laid polygonal masonry that now drenches the tops of Peruvian peaks? How they once raised the ancient obelisk of Aswan? But I digress. Many have now conceded that the methodology of the Great Pyramids of Giza construction continues to be an enigma in regards to a modern explanation as to how the modern man accomplished such feats. Could this mystery be linked to the cover-up in which many have claimed, and we ourselves encountered, in regard to the remains of this possibly lost civilization, smothered by the Smithsonian? one that we would now perceive as ancient giants? It is a hypothesis which would indeed be a fitting explanation for these mysteries and a cover-up, the stifling of a reason for their continued inexplicability to modern explanation. It is a theory which we find incredibly intriguing. There are many ancient ruins that were not only beyond the capabilities of the claimed creators, but we postulate were simply re-inhabited, allowing the far more primitive and we feel far more recent inhabitants to flourish, developing these sanctuaries, often heavily fortified temples, to a point where they were able to leave their own mark upon these locations. An archaeological legacy left after the original creators of said sites were seemingly wiped out with their own archaeological legacies simply washed away by the seas of our planet. These remnants have allowed academia to simply disregard the feat of engineering such incredibly large sites would have required, pinning such efforts to a more suitable candidate. After researching many such sites, backed up by the megalithic accomplishments that they still possess, one will begin to notice a pattern an illogical and contradictory history for these groups, often invaded by a similarly capable and heavily studied group. The question is, why were a group who were apparently capable of building such a site so easily dominated by another which existed at the same era of history? One would have imagined that if they were indeed the builders of said sites, that they would have also been able to have created substantial defense systems Yet these are invariably absent from nearly all of these sites, with just the weather-resistant megaliths, and indeed the condition of the sites most probably very similar to how they are found today. And Chan Chan is no exception. Believed to have been constructed around 850 AD, based on archaeological finds, subsequently claimed as having been constructed by the Chimu. Although this explanation for the enormous site is conveniently absent any explanation as to how this society achieved such incredible feats of ancient engineering. It became the Chamur Empire's capital city, with an estimated population of 40 to 60,000 people when invaded by the Inca. After the Inca captured the Chamu around 1470 AD, Chan Chan was abandoned and by 1535 AD again became a ruin of history. Surviving into modern day and beyond, while no longer a teeming capital city, Chan Chan was still well known for its great riches and was consequently looted by the Spanish treasure hunters. With an indication of the creator's wealth seen in a 16th century list of items looted from a burial tomb, a treasure equivalent to 80,000 pesos of gold was recovered, nearly 5 million US dollars in gold. Incredibly intricate stone-cut engravings rest alongside massive fortified walls, and there is most likely many other tombs in the site, which not only predate this later re-inhabitation, but are probably also filled to the rafters with gold, an expression of these original creators' power, 
and again, contradictory to the Chamu's claim to such a site. Furthermore, Chan Chan is in a particularly arid section of the coastal desert of northern Peru, and due to the lack of rain in this area, the major source of non-salted water was in the form of rivers carrying surface runoff from the Andes. This runoff allowed for the control of land and water through irrigation systems. The city of Chan Chan spanned 20 square kilometers and had a dense urban center of 6 square kilometers. This contained extravagant ciudadelas, ciudadelas being the large architectural masterpieces which house plazas, storerooms, and burial platforms for the royals. Who were the original builders of Chan Chan? Were they, like we postulate, wiped out during a disaster? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.